if you're in the casino playing roulette, the odds are always stacked against you. If I take all of my chips and place them on a random number, let's say 25, pretty crazy bet there, give the ball a spin. Even if this comes in, the return I'll get will only be 35 to one, despite the odds of this happening being 37 to one. Every spin of the roulette wheel is completely random and completely unpredictable. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was 25. <laughs> As I was saying. <laughs> Every spin on the roulette wheel is completely random and totally unpredictable. There is no way to gain an edge over the house at roulette. But that is not so with blackjack. Usually, of course, it is in the house's favor, but some people can beat the casinos by counting cards. So how difficult is it to do it? Let's find out. So the movies Rain Man and 21 make card counting seem like a way to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars if you have some superhuman level of intelligence and can do complex maths in your head. But is this actually possible? Can you actually beat the house? And if so, how difficult is it to do this? Are there actually people out there who do this for a living, like for real? Well, let's meet one. Um, my name is Stephen Bridges and I am a card counter. Perfect. That's a <laughs> badass intro. <laughs> five, three, four, five, six, seven, 2,740 in an hour. I'm not gonna play games with you. Are you gonna show me ID or not? Am I legally? Are you gonna show me ID or not? Am I legally? Grab your chips and get out of here. Okay. Don't come back. Straight out the door. So if you are a really good blackjack player, but you're not counting, if you're a perfect basic strategy player, which just basically means you're playing the game like a computer, you're making all of the mathematically correct plays, the casino is still gonna have about a 0.5% edge over you, but it really does depend on the game. So that's if you're playing perfectly, you'll just lose money very slowly. If you're counting, all that you're doing is clawing back that edge and gaining about 1% edge over the house, or maybe 2%. It goes up as the count gets higher, as the, as the shoe is, is more hot, is hotter. But in general, you're getting a tiny margin. So it's not like people think that it's, you walk in there with $10 and you walk out with 10 grand. It's nothing like that at all. Card counters will lose just under half the time when they're playing. And that could be thousands and thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, depending. You can go through massive, streaks of losing, but overall, you have the edge, not the house. So given enough hours played, you are, well, in theory, over an infinite amount of time, guaranteed to win. So here's the script. I want to find out if a normal person can learn card counting. How long does it take to learn? And can we actually win some money with this? I want to know. I have four days with Steven to learn as much as I can from him and practice. And on the fifth day, working as a team, with me counting, we're going to try and beat the house in a simulated game of blackjack. First, let's start with the basics. Do I even know how to play blackjack? To find out, we started off with 500 pounds worth of chips. And let me loose at the table. Now you're down. <laughs> Card. Card. Ah, oh, Jesus. 30 per box here. Okay. <laughs> Step two. <laughs> so uh, I should have taken a card there? Absolutely. Yeah. Should have taken a card there? Absolutely not. Give me a big number. Yes! yes! <laughs> See, always split tens, right, Stephen? <laughs> it's never split tens. Okay. <laughs> People would leave the table if the team. 21. Jesus Christ. Well, you could have played it better. 21. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. That was a fast way to lose 500 quid. It turns out, I don't know how to play blackjack, like, at all. Which isn't surprising, really, because I don't gamble. I obviously know the rules, but as far as strategy, well, I have none. I should stress that there is only one way to play blackjack. There's no opinion or superstition involved. Basic strategy is just piles of cold, hard data that you need to know. And I know none of it. This is not a good foundation atop which to build a card counting career, but anyway. On to card counting. I was concerned that this all seemed very complicated and above my intellect level. I think it's easier to count cards than people think it is, and it's also harder than people think it is. In essence, it's not that hard. It's not that complicated. You're just doing a few things at once, which is where it gets tricky, and then it's all of the extra stuff people haven't even considered that's where the difficulty of the job comes in. With card counting, you really have to get as close to perfection as possible. There's not a massive amount of room for error because you have such a, a, such a small edge over the house. So if you're making a few mistakes every shoe, you're gonna get rid of your entire edge. So yeah, you don't have to be Rain Man. I'm not great at math, but I can still do it. So you don't need to be a genius. Well, that's great news. So how does it work? And why isn't everyone just doing this? In principle, card counting works by keeping track of the low cards and the high cards. When the shoe has got a lot of high cards, you're more likely to win, so you bet bigger. People think that card counting works is that you're memorizing all the cards that you see, which is not what we're doing and way more difficult. What we're actually doing is assigning each card a point score. So in this case, two, three, six are worth plus one point. Seven, eight, and nine, we just ignore, they're zero. And 10 jack, queen, king, and ace are worth minus one point. And all we're doing is as we see these cards come out of the shoe, we're just keeping track of that running point score. So for example, if you saw a two, that would be plus one, and you keep track of that number in your head. So I'll be going plus one, plus one, plus one. If I then have a three, that's another plus one. So now we're on two as a total. So I'll be saying two, 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 three, 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 three four, 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 five, five, five. Then we have minus one, so it'd be four, 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 three, 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 two, 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 and like that. And all we're doing as we go through all of the cards in the shoe is every single card that we see, we're keeping a mental track of that tally. And that's all we're doing is focusing on that one number. When, you, when the number is really high, what it means is that there's a lot of tens and aces left in the shoe. And there's a certain point when you hit this like tipping point, if that number is high enough, then you are more likely to win than the dealer in theory, if you're playing like perfect blackjack. So when it gets to a certain point where it's like quite dense with picture cards and aces, then we bet much higher. And then when it's a negative count, well, like there's not many picture cards and aces, we want to bet as little as we can get away with. That sounds too easy. Well, yeah, that's it, it's easy. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in essence, in essence, it's pretty straightforward. It's one of those things that's simple in theory, but to execute it is quite tricky. So if you're keeping perfect track of the count, you also need to be playing perfect blackjack. And you're playing a game that involves numbers whilst thinking about a number, whilst also, how are you, how's your day going today, sir? And you know, all this stuff too. And uh, so there's a lot that you're, you're sort of having to, to juggle in your head. And because we have such a small margin, of like such a small edge, if you make mistakes, if you're off on the count by one, okay, maybe that's forgivable. But if you're off by two, now we're really in a, we're getting in a bad spot. Seems easy, right? Let's recap. You watch each card that comes out of the shoe, and if it's a two, three, four, five, or six, you add one to the count. You ignore seven, eights, and nines, and pitcher cards and aces, you take one away from the count. Piece of cake. Let's try together, starting at zero. Did you get it? You can see how this could get pretty tricky, right? Steven set about helping me to learn to be a card counter, starting slowly and trying to get me to play decent blackjack along the way. So let's start learning to count cards then. So this is day one, hour zero. Minus one. The next card we see is this. Okay, minus two. Minus two, now we're on minus two. The next one will be this. We ignore it, it's a seven, eight, nine. Minus two, still. We start on zero. So that's one, two, two, three. Yeah. 
Well done. You're doing good. But when you get a situation like this with a minus one and a plus yeah, one, you can just ignore it. The things I have to do, what's the count? Minus two. Yeah, very good. All right. Just do your best. Yes! <laughs> but what's the count? Eight. Yes, good. Okay, you didn't lose it last time. <laughs> yeah. Two. No, am I getting it wrong again? What's the count? Five. What you got? I'm on four. What were you on? Two. Yeah, it's four. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a that's, definite that's, fail. Yeah, without without out with the margin of fail that we need. Where 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 we're at right now is that this wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. Um, I still think we can get there. Yeah, I think we can get there, but Jesus Christ. Because there's times when you're really on it. It's just that in this game... I was understanding the basic concept of counting. When the count is high, there are proportionately more face cards and aces, which favours us, the player. So that's when we bet big. But how big? How do we turn this tiny advantage into cold, hard cash? Do we up our bet to 50 bucks a hand or 100 bucks? Because the edge we get is so tiny, to make any decent profit, you've got to go big. And I mean big. What are, you, what are you betting? What I'm betting depends on a lot of factors. It's not going to be the same every time. If I'm working with a team and we've got a large bankroll, then it's going to be a lot higher. I think the most that I've bet per hand, we're talking the potential, you know, the couple thousand dollars-ish range. But if you're doing that every single hand, playing two hands at once, then that you could lose a few hands in a row and, and that'd be a lot. But I've had like a $30,000 loss in a session, close to 100K USD on a bad run in a really short space of time, and then the flip. So losing money is a, is a really, so like a, it's like a really big part of it and that's the hardest thing because even if you're playing with an edge and you know, I know I'm gonna win eventually, you could have such a bad losing streak. And the longer that you're playing over the course of your card counting career, the more guaranteed you are to have longer losing streaks and longer winning streaks. Stephen will regularly work in a team with half a million dollars in bankroll between them, betting hundreds of thousands of dollars in a session that could last hours and hours. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And to ensure you land on the right side of that tiny edge, you have to play a lot of blackjack. Uh, right, this is day three. Day three, uh, and we're just doing uh, more. More counting. <laughs> That's very well summarised. Yeah. Four. Mm -hmm. One. I'll find one. Okay. <laughs> Learning to nice. count cards involves just brutal hours of non stop blackjack. I constantly found the game too fast to count and was regularly off by two, three, or four, which is disastrous. D1, yeah, it was. It was, I was, it was D1. Yeah, did you say one? Yeah. <laughs> I, got it, I got it wrong straight, straight <laughs> on the bat. <laughs> I was exhausted after two hours of counting and my blackjack was just horrible. But worse than all of that, it was so obvious I was trying to count cards. I would pause on like 20, trying to pretend as if I was considering taking a card when really I was just trying to update the count in my head before the cards disappear. This doesn't seem like a big deal, right? Well, if you watch any of Steven's videos, you'll quickly learn that the difficulty for card counters isn't counting cards or streaks of bad luck. It's the outrageous verging on criminal behavior of casinos towards advantaged players. Correct me if I'm wrong. Am I not legally allowed to cash out my chips and leave and never come back to this property? Yeah, I don't actually cash out my chips. You Am I not legally allowed to cash out my chips? How am I not legally allowed to cash out my chips? Are you my idea? Yes. And then what more? Why am I allowed? Because that's what I said. That's what I asked for. You need to show me your ID. And the federal law requires you to have an ID to cash out your chips. Well, I don't have an ID. 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 I don't have Card counting is not illegal at all. It's not even classified as cheating. That's something that people say a lot to me. It's like, oh, you're cheating. I'm like, it's not cheating any more than... The way that I say it is, would it be considered cheating in any game in the world to think too much? 
Can you imagine if you put a cap on a chess player for thinking too much? It would be ludicrous or a poker player for memorizing too many charts and stats. So you can't call card counting cheating and you can't say that it's illegal because all you're doing is using your head and you're using the same information that all the other players at the table have. You're not using a little computer, none of that. You're just using your head. So not only is it not illegal, it's very legal and it's not cheating despite what casinos would love people to think. I'm not sure the number of casinos I'm banned from and it depends on what you call a ban, but I think nearly every casino that I've played blackjack in has at the end ask me to leave or stop me playing. Because it's a private business, they can they have the right to refuse service. So they can kick you out for any reason they want really, provided they're not discriminating. I have lost count of the amount of times that I've been kicked out. Either kicked out from the casino, escorted out of the casino, or just told that I can't play blackjack or I'm not allowed to play blackjack. Can we just take a moment to consider how absurd it is that casinos will throw you out of their establishment if you think too much about the game? How is that not illegal? Watching Steven's videos, I genuinely feel a sense of rage at this gross injustice as he gets removed, sometimes they'll even call the police, because he used his mind to beat a system that is in itself predatory. Anyway, back to card counting. Two, one, this has to be a picture or an ace, and if so, and you've had a perfect shoot. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Come on! You smashed it though. Yeah, so what is it? It's five o'clock and we've been going since like 12. So that's five straight hours of just counting cards. I was really surprised at how difficult this seemingly straightforward task was. I found it similar to sitting a five hour exam. I was dreaming of cards at night and counting in my sleep and needed a constant flow of caffeine to stay effective. After four days of practice, eventually we started seeing some results. My camps were more accurate, I was faster, and I could actually talk and act somewhat normal. Finally, I got through a six deck shoe with zero mistakes. That was a milestone for me. On a six, running yeah. six. If this gets to zero, that'll be the first six, six deck, deck shoe. shoe that I've counted. And then had no errors. Yeah. And that's a really good sign. Two, one, zero, seven, eight, or a nine. That's what we want. Yeah. Yes, you did it. The whole six was, decks, yeah, no mistakes. And I was chilled, right? You were chill. You did great. You smashed it. I am ready. <laughs> That's a really good sign though. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of carbs now. So it was time to try this out for real. Here's the setup. We replicated a real game of blackjack that you could play in real life. We have a real dealer in. This is James, our dealer and I have $10,000 in chips here. On this table, the minimum bet is $50 and the maximum is 10,000. This is the high rollers table. And in this scenario, I'm going to act as the spotter. So I just sit and play blackjack, betting the table minimum, keeping my cool, quietly counting cards, waiting for the opportune moment. We do this for two reasons. One, it won't seem so suspicious as my bet will always remain the same. And two, I can't play blackjack anyway, so I end up losing all our money. When the shoe is hot, i.e. when the count is a true two and above, I'll cue Steven in using a sneaky, subtle signal. I'll also indicate the running count using chips. Hopefully I've got the count right. Steven rolls in with the big box and starts betting. Heavy, whilst playing textbook perfect blackjack. Hello, can I join you? Could I have some thousands, please? We each make millions of dollars and ride off into the sunset. Steven starts with a hundred grand in chips with our total bankroll at half a million dollars. And remember, although this game is simulated, all of these numbers and the table rules, they are all real. Hey. I'm in the swing of things, thank you. <clears throat> so the first shoe, I actually felt like I counted the cards correctly, but the count went to negative 13. In other words, that's terrible for us. It's too low to be salvageable, so we just wait till the next shoe. 15, 16. And this time, the shoe goes hot. My counting is on point. I signal to Steven and hand it over to the big dog. Time to make some money. Hello, can I join you? Now the count's 
just dropped a point where it's not an advantage situation. So did we win? Oh, I don't think so. No, I think we're down quite a bit. Because I think I came with, um, did I come with 100 grand or 50 grand? It was 50 grand I sat down with. You know, 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, So, 26. after the first shoe, we were down 12 and a half grand. But this is like well within, this is well within what we'd expect. Yeah. Like this, <laughs> weirdly, we wouldn't really be, you know, we wouldn't be concerned at this point. But this could, this is for one shoe. Yeah. If that can happen that way, it can happen the other way, and it can happen twice the other way in the next 20 minutes. And, then you're up and now we're up, so. Remember what Stephen said earlier. The edge is like one or two percent. So just under half the time, card counters lose. Right, onwards and upwards. So I lost the count there, so just walk away and everything, all that time was wasted. Twice I lost or forgot the count. This is really hard. Each time I messed up, we had to wait to reshuffle and start again, which is incredibly inefficient. After some coffee and lunch, however, my counting got better and we got a hot shoe. I signaled Stephen in and thankfully, things started going our way. Come on. Yes! It's fine. Big win, right? Yeah, yeah. Still five grand, isn't it? Five grand. We're, we're, yeah, we're down about four grand. That shoe got us up to even, nearly. Straight after that, we got another hot shoe. This time the count was really high. Ben, you know what? Come on, come on. Picture, oh. picture, picture, picture. Yes! <laughs> that. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a thirty thousand dollar hat. It's not even real money, look how I happy know. we are. <laughs> Picture. Ooh, yes. It's 10 grand there. Come on. Picture, picture. Yeah. 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 Crush. Uh, yeah. So Yes. All right, let's see where we're at. That last shoot, everything seemed to go our way. So what was our running total? So I started with $10,000 and amazingly, without even really thinking about playing blackjack, I made $115. So I'm up $115. How'd you get on, Steve? <laughs> yeah, pretty well. Yeah, overall, when we take it all into account, uh, we start off with a half million dollar bankroll. We now have winnings of $46,615 which is good. <laughs> yeah, like, that is a good night. I mean, I'm very happy with that. Yeah. So that would be about $11,653 per hour, which is considerably above expected value. Yeah. And it's so more we've than ran I, good. Yeah, and it's more than I get paid now. Yeah. yeah. In terms of how you did, you signaled me in when the count was high and you signaled me in and you communicated the correct count. So you didn't make any errors there. There were times when you made mistakes when you were off on the count, but m the vast majority of the time, I think every time, you were self-aware enough yeah. to know that you would leave the table and find yeah. another table. Yeah. In which case, you weren't, you weren't a risk to us. Yeah, I wasn't destructive, but I was it efficient. Was just forgetting how much we actually ended up winning, because it could have gone either way, I think you did your job just about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get many emails from blackjack teams, no, but no. I'm very impressed. Yeah, it's hard. This episode was supported by Curiosity Stream. Right now, Curiosity Stream are offering my viewers an annual subscription for just $14.79. That's 26% off and works out at $1.23 a month, which is ludicrously low. They've also partnered with the creator-run, streamy-nominated streaming service Nebula, so you get that included in your subscription. Curiosity Stream is a streaming service dedicated to documentaries. I really like the space and nature films like the David Attenborough narrated film about tuna. There are thousands of shows, many of them original and exclusive to Curiosity Stream, and you get all the premium stuff you'd expect, like an app for the TV, for phones and tablets, and the ability to watch offline, which is great for traveling. 
Nebula, however, is different. It's a creator-made platform made by the community that I am part of. We built this because sometimes YouTube doesn't like a certain topic or very long videos. It's an ad-free experience with original shows made by creators, and the authors are free from the dreaded demonetization, allowing them to expand their horizons of possible content. So if you want ad-free MKBHD or massive 90-minute Wendover production content, which is excellent by the way, Nebula is the place to be. Again, Curiosity Stream and Nebula are bundled together for under 15 bucks for the whole year. Just sign up for Curiosity Stream using the link below to get your discount, and that also helps support the show. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time. Peace.